Aging of a complicated machine like the human body or indeed any other living organism is fundamentally the same process as aging of a car or an aeroplane or whatever. And that is, first of all, useful in emphasizing that aging is not a mystery, but it's also useful in beginning the, um, you know, the explanation for what ways of going about doing something about aging are most feasible, most plausible, and which ones are not. And in particular, the big thing that it shows us is that reversing aging, in other words, genuinely taking someone back to a younger biological age than they were when you started the therapy, is going to be easier than slowing aging down or stopping aging. It sounds paradoxical. It, you would think, you know, you're making more of a difference by reversing. But actually, the reason why you can see that it's actually easier is because it's what we already do with simple man-made machines. If you look at a car, for example, there are cars around today that are more than 100 years old. Not one of those cars was designed to last 100 years. They were designed to last maybe 10 or 15 years, and the only reason that they have lasted longer is because we have figured out how to combat their aging process. And how do we do that? We do it by damage repair, by reversing aging, by periodically actually going in and removing rust that has accumulated or whatever it might be, replacing a part that has become damaged. You asked anyone 100 years ago who was building a car whether any of the cars they were building would last 100 years, they'd have laughed at you. But you ask someone now whether a car that's already 100 years old is going to last another 100 years and they'll say, well, of course it will. We'll just carry on doing the same thing. So. It's going to be exactly the same for the human body. The only reason we can't already do it is because the human body is so much more complicated. But what we're lucky about is that the damage that the body accumulates that eventually causes us to get sick and die is not all that complicated. We look at metabolism, the way that the body actually works, it's horrendously complicated. Plus, of course, we only understand a small fraction of it. We look at the pathologies of old age, the actual ways in which people get sick and die, and they are also very, very complicated. Masses of things going wrong all at the same time, interacting with each other, it's a mess. But the bit in the middle, the damage that accumulates as a side effect of metabolism throughout life, and it's harmless for a long time because the body's set up to tolerate quite a bit of damage, but eventually becomes harmful when there's too much. Right? That damage is relatively simple. It can be characterized and described in just seven big categories, each of which is a very clearly, you know, concretely defined thing. You know, it's pretty good. So that's why I feel that we are on top of this.